What's milk paint? That's such a great question. I didn't know for the longest time, and let me tell you, I was frustrated because I wasn't using it right. But that's all about to change today as I teach you all about milk paint. So what am I gonna teach you in Milk Paint 101? Today we're gonna learn about what milk paint is and do I use the powder or the liquid? Uh, how do I apply it? How do I finish it? What looks can I achieve? So all of those are great questions that we are going to cover today. And I want to thank you for joining me on my YouTube channel. I am Heidi Marsh and you have reached the YouTube channel for Revive Heart and Home where it is my goal to help you decorate your home in both eco-friendly and budget-friendly ways. So, so, are you ready? Get your milk paint ready and grab a pen and paper to take notes and let's get painting. Welcome to Milk Paint 101. Today we are going to talk about milk paint and all those great questions that I mentioned in the intro. So first, what is milk paint? Crazy, but milk paint is a casein-based paint. And basically all that means is that the casein is the protein that is in milk and um, that is what it is made. Casein-based paints were discovered in cave dwellings on drawings in the cave. Uh, that date back to 20,000 years ago. Um, that was what they used. So milk paint is not chalk paint. Let's just get that out of the way. It is very different. And in fact, uh, people get frustrated, me being one of them, when they first tried it and expected it to be an act and uh, behave just like chalk paint. It is much thinner, so it runs. It doesn't have the adhesion qualities that chalk paint does, and it has a short shelf life. So why use it? I'll give you two great reasons. One is that it's eco-friendly, and two is because it gives you an old world finish, and you can't really get that authentic look from chalk paint. So now that you've actually made the decision to try milk paint, which kind do you use? Now, it would be, um, easy to just go down to your local craft store and pick up this pre-liquid form, but I am going to suggest that you don't do this. Because it's because this has separators in it, it has binding agents, and it, it was actually formulated to uh, behave more like uh, chalk paint, and that's actually what we don't want. Um, this also doesn't allow you to customize it. Now, there are different kinds on the market, but I use um, Amy Howard at Homes uh, Toscana milk paint. Okay, so her milk paint also comes in a variety of colors. In fact, this color is a custom color of these four, and I'm gonna show you how to achieve this color in just a second. One of the great thing about the powdered kind of milk paint is that you can mix up the amount that you need. You and one thing that you should absolutely know though is that it has a shelf life, and that's because it's milk, so it will rot, right? Um, so once you mix it up um, and you wanna put it in the fridge overnight and keep it there, and it will last for about two weeks and then it will start to spoil, just like regular milk. Okay, let's talk about supplies. So you, you are going to need, of course, your milk paint. You will need a product called Cracked Gesso. And now this is absolutely essential to this look and it's only available through Amy Howard at home. So I will want you to get this. You will need to clean your furniture first, of course. And again, I recommend Clean Slate. I've done a whole video on why this is the best cleaning product out there. So you can check that out right here. Uh, you will need a couple of mixing containers. I get these at uh, hardware stores. A couple of chip brushes, one for your gesso, one for your milk paint. You will need some water, some stir sticks, a measuring spoon, um, some wax. Now you can use like a taper candle or I just use these little votives that I get at Ikea and a, uh, a scraper. So once you have all that th those things, you'll be ready to go. Okay, so step one is to mix your cracked gesso and then apply it. So let's go ahead and mix that first. Um, your gesso is going to be fairly thick, um, about the consistency of sour cream. 
And when you mix it with water, you will want to do a one to um, a two to one ratio. So for every two parts of gesso, you will put one part water. So basically all I do is take my um, <clears throat> measuring spoon. I'm gonna put in two tablespoons of my gesso. And then I take my stir stick and just stir it. Let me just show this to you. It kind of looks like that, okay? It's fairly thick. Then you are going to take your chip brush. I should also note that this also has a shelf life of about two weeks. So I would also put it in the fridge when you're not using it. Let me show you how to apply it. So uh, once you have cleaned your peat and you have your bare wood, uh, you will want to apply your gesso. Uh, one thing though, that if you are working on a dark piece like this, you're going to want to shellac it with um, clear shellac first so it seals it and it won't allow the tannins to bleed through your milk paint. If you're working on a raw piece of wood, um, you will want to use a, a stain. And what I recommend is Amy Howard at Home's gel stain. Okay, so to apply it, you're just gonna go back and forth really um, <clears throat> lightly. You don't want to put on a super thick coat and you want to cover it 100%. And I like this striated look that the chip brush gives me, um, you know, meaning that you can see kind of the lines because it will, when it pops through, it will look fabulous and old. So, so you are going to let this dry for about an hour and then you're going to come back and put on another coat. And this time I want you to cross hatch it. I mean, I want you to go in the opposite direction. So if you went back and forth here, I want you to go like this, go vertical up and down just like that. And you will let that also dry for about it. So I wanna to talk to you about why we use cracked gesso. So in a, a finish like this, you see this white peeking through. That is what you are going to see. This is the white that you're going to see. So you might ask yourself, well, why don't I use, just use white chalk paint? You could, um, but what this does is because it's a, it's a calcium carbonate based gesso, it gives you texture. And when you feel this, you will feel, it feels soft, but you will feel the bumps and the lines and it gives it dimension and that old world like it's it looks a little bit like plaster and then when you layer on other things that texture comes out and makes it look old you just can't do that with chalk paint so so one other thing you should know about uh, cracked gesso besides giving texture you can use this to create a really really chippy look um, now i'm going to use just one to maybe two coats on this now if you want it to chip and actually break off so you have um you know the the brown showing through but it's got kind of jagged edges you'll want to apply three coats and you'll want to continue doing that cross hatch motion and that will give it that will harden really hard and then when you put the um, milk paint on it, you'll see it start to crack it's really cool to watch and then as you go on to your next step to distress it, it will start to chip off. So it's a really cool look and very versatile. There are two ways to get that this white light to peek through. I'm gonna show you a uh, distressing tool using a seawool sponge and using that as a negative tool. For now, there's another way you can do this as well, and that is just to grab um, a little candle. It's called a wax resist, and you're going to lay some wax down in random spots. Most furniture, if you want it to look old, you're only gonna have wear marks, or i.e. distressing marks, where the furniture would have been touched over hundreds of years. Some of you asked me to replicate uh, a picture that you found um, on the internet, and uh, that has definitely some white showing through in different areas um, that is not where it normally would have been, and that is more of an artistic technique. So if that's a look you want to go for, and it's not in a, a place where you know normal touching would have been, I will just, um, dab it on and kind of twist and pull, twist and pull in random spots. Now, if I want some of that striated look, um, I will do that with the other technique I will teach you. But if you want little white spots, you just dab on some wax. Okay, so let's continue. Okay. So Amy Howard at Home's paint comes in a powder form. And the way that she picks it up is uh, you just take whatever measurement unit you want to use, uh, put it in a container like this, and mix it with one part water. So it's one part powder, one part water, and just mix it up. Um, 
and you're going to want to agitate it every few minutes. Have any chemicals in there to keep it together. It will, once it's on your furniture, but in a, a volume liquid form, it won't. And that's what you get with authentic milk paint. So if you put it in overnight and it will, it'll, be, it'll separate, it'll be like a clay type um, consistency on the bottom and the water overnight. I usually get a, a strong spoon and uh, stir it up. Or um, if, if you have an immersion blender, that's actually the best thing. And I just uh, stir it up for a couple seconds and then rinse it off. So now again, I will mention you can keep this um, in your refrigerator for up to two weeks before it spoils. Make sure you put it in the refrigerator or it will stink to high heaven. And you should also know that milk paint is very, very thin. So I'm just gonna show you here, I'm gonna pour it. Um, it is not like chalk paint, it's just like water. Um, so don't yeah. let that fool you, it's supposed to be that way. But because it's that way, if you can, uh, try not to paint on a vertical surface, try to paint on a horizontal surface. So for instance, like this piece, um, uh, if I wasn't doing a demonstration, I would take it out and put the drawers and then uh, paint it on top so it doesn't run. So if you have to paint on a vertical surface, just make sure you have a towel nearby so that if it does start to drip, you kind of uh, pat up the drip so it doesn't leave a drip mark, if that makes sense. Okay, so this color that I have done, you can see it here, it's a beautiful uh, light turquoise, soft turquoise, that's what I have up here, and I'm actually gonna use two colors. Um, Amy's paint comes, I think, in about 12 different milk paint colors, and she's coming out with more. This is a custom color. I took, I think, five different colors and blended them together, together to get the color that I wanted. If you do decide to mix and match, though, be sure to mix the powder it in powder form. You don't want to mix different colors up in liquid form and then put it together. You won't get consistent color. You want to mix the powder first, write it down, write down the recipe. Okay, so once you have your color picked and made up, um, you will dip your chip brush in here, off of your brush, and just paint it on. Just like this, on top of the cracked gesso. Be sure to get in all of the cracks and crevices, and you do want 100% coverage. You are going to remove some of the paint in the next step, so I will cover that now. So, and then allow that to dry for about 30 minutes. One thing I forgot to mention, before you actually start painting, you will want to take a 400 grit sandpaper or sanding block and lightly sand the top of this so that when you get to touch the furniture, it doesn't feel rough. You will still feel the texture, but you want it to be smooth. Okay, so now comes the fun part. <clears throat> this is the part where you get to be artistic, and what I mean by that is um, picking and choosing where you are going to dress. Now, um, again, generally, uh, you should probably distress most uh, on the parts that fingers would have tied corners around the handle, um, but if you're going more for a um, an artistic look, you can, you know, again, it's your, your own discretion. Um, I would just recommend that um, because you might be working up close that you take a step back every once in a while and look at your piece as a whole. Um, so for this segment, you will need a few things. You will need sea bowl sponges, um, a bowl of water, a scraper, and a nice cup of tea, but this is not for drinking. <laughs> this is for your wet distressing. And I use um, a dark black uh, because it tints it this color and that will leave just a little bit of an, um, when you use it to wet distress. That's it I'm going today. So um, if you don't want a little bit of antiquing, you can just use some plain water. Okay, so now you have your supplies. Let's get distressing. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is remove the wax that we laid down earlier, the wax bits. And you need a, a stiff scraper and you want to you're gonna remove it with a good amount of pressure, but you don't wanna gouge it because that's gonna take off your paint. Um, you're just gonna go back, you can see where it is underneath, and you're gonna lightly scrape it off, um, just like this. And go at it at different angles. So go this way sometime, and then this way other times. So and this is how you get uh, the little white specks coming through. Because you used 
cracked gesso and you used uh, three coats, two or three coats, you are gonna have some flake off, like big chunks flake off. That's perfectly okay, that's what you want. And you can't necessarily control that, that's the thing. So I'd like to go through this first with my scraper, get any uh, cracked loose pieces off, and then we will go through, kind of balance it out with wet distressing. So I'm gonna just continue to find my places where it's loose, pull that up. Again, just lightly go over it, it will come up naturally. So you can see it's starting to ch it's starting to crack right here. Watch. Just kind of go over this. See how that just flakes off? And because you can't necessarily control where it flakes off, it will give you a very wow, that was a big piece. Now I'm gonna go ahead and continue doing that on the whole piece, but I won't make you watch me. So stay tuned for the next step. Okay, so now we've scraped off all of the wax and any flakes and so forth, so we're ready to go for our teeth. So take your seawall sponge, dip it in the clear water first, rinse it out, you just want it wet, okay? Then you're going to dip it in here. Make sure it's not too bad. You're just gonna take your sponge and gently kind of saturate the milk paint. Now that that has had a chance to soak just a couple minutes, not really not much long at all, you're gonna take it again, dip it in the tea, rinse it out, and you're just gonna lightly rub. And you can kind of see how that white is coming through. So you can rub and then also use like a pounce and twist. Pounce and twist. Now you're just gonna kind of go all over in the areas that you want the paint to lift off. If you want to go all the way down to the, the gesso, you do a little bit harder. If you want it to go all the way down to the wood, a little bit harder. harder. So just practice with your pressure and you'll you'll begin to learn like um, how <clears throat> tough. So right there, you can see I did pretty rough, pretty, sorry, pretty um, strong. And I was able to go down to the wood and part of the gesso, okay? You don't, and you want to be random again. So I encourage you maybe do kind of a, a once over, let it dry and then go back. Cause you'll be like, oh, I really didn't take off as much there as I thought. And it's a little harder to tell when you are, um, <clears throat> when it's wet. So I'm going to leave that be for a second and I'm going to go over to this area and do it again. So if you have a heat gun or a hair dryer, you can speed up the process and just hit it. Don't get it too close. Um, but hit it with some air, warm air, and then that will speed up the process and then you can Almost final step. So now we're going to continue to age the piece with some wax. Now, um, I'm going to use two colors of wax here. One just as a general protectant and one to age it. And the two waxes I use are uh, also by Amy Howard at home and it's Vintage Wood Mind Your Own Beeswax. And um, she also has a dark antique wax. And what I usually do is I have two brushes, one for dark and one for light. And then I grab uh, a couple of kind of cutouts of uh, cardboard, dark on one and light on the other. So I first go through with my dark. And I have a whole tutorial on how to wax. Um, so if you want to see that, you can look here. But you'll load up your brush, offload it, and then you generally want to attack the piece from where it generally uh, has some natural aid. Here I've done a little bit extra aging, um, just from an artistic standpoint. You can choose to do it that way, or again, just kind of go a more traditional route. If you go uh, a more holistic route, uh, you want to make sure that you don't use dark wax on more than 15% of your piece, otherwise it will just look like Oh, so I will tend to go like here on the edge um, and just like this and kind of swirl in. Then I will come back with a lint free rag and clean it up a little. Wipe any excess off. Because again, you want it to look subtle. Okay, so now that you have put down your dark, dark wax and let it dry, you're going to come back with your right wax. Again, um, dip it in here completely, offload it, 
and then you're just going to apply it. And you apply it everywhere, even on top of the dark wax, but again, make sure that your um, dark wax is dry, otherwise it will just blend with it and make a weird funky color. So you don't want that. Okay, you're done. Check out that beautiful cracking and the layers of color, the texture, and the natural distressing. I'm so glad that you were able to join me for this tutorial and I hope it was easy. If at any time you have any questions, feel free to email me at revivebyheidi at gmail.com and it would mean the world to me too if you took a moment to like this video and be sure to subscribe and look around because there's all sorts of other tutorials on old world finishes, upcycling and other DIY projects. Thanks guys and have a great day.